Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Before we get started today, I just wanted to let everybody know that we've created the Symphony POS Support private Facebook group. It's a free group that anybody can join. So go ahead and click the link in the description below, join the Facebook group, ask any questions you may have about Symphony and Micros products in general and the hospitality business. Today, I wanted to discuss some advanced Symphony configuration. More specifically, I wanted to talk about macros. So what is a macro? A macro is basically a way to combine multiple procedures when you just press one button. And the macro that we're gonna create today is we're gonna add a button that is gonna begin a check, switch the order type to delivery, and also add a delivery fee of $5. So basically, instead of pressing three separate buttons, we're just going to press one that's going to do all three of these procedures in one go. So here we are in EMC and let's take a look at the different steps that we need to take to make sure we have everything programmed. First, we need to begin a check. Now, that's a default system function, so we don't need to program anything there. Next, we need to switch our default dine-in order type to a delivery order type. Now, unfortunately, we do not have a delivery order type, so we're gonna have to create one. So to do this, first, I'm gonna go to my enterprise level because that's where I have my order types program. You might have them at a lower level, such as the restaurant or the zone. And I'm gonna go to the descriptors tab. Here in the descriptors tab, we have the order types. It's gonna be here under the miscellaneous area. So here is where I'm gonna define the name of my order type. If you want to check what order types you have defined, you just take a look here and I see we have a dine-in. We do have a takeout, but no delivery. The reason why we want a separate delivery order type is mainly for sales tracking. We're introducing a delivery service and we would like to know how much sales come from the delivery as opposed to just somebody coming in the restaurant and ordering takeout. So I'm going to erase order type 3 from here and I'm going to name it delivery. So now that I have my name, I'm just gonna go ahead and save it. So here in the order type parameter, I just entered the name, but I also have to do some configuration for this order type. To do that, I'm gonna go to the setup tab, and here I have order type parameters. And again, I'm at the same level of enterprise. So I'm clicking here and I see I do have my correct name here and it is defined here for option bit i'm gonna click the little three ellipses here and i want option bit number one print on customer receipts and guest checks i do want the order type to be printed on the guest check so when the guests receive their check um, they receive their delivery they're just gonna see delivery at the top which is perfectly fine I also wanted to print on order printers. So this is gonna go to the kitchen. This is very important information for the kitchen to know so they know what type of containers to use to bag it up and everything else. And I'm also gonna check option bit number five, perform auto combo recognition to, for our auto combos to still work. Even if you don't have auto combos, you can go ahead and check this box. It's perfectly fine to leave it on. And then I'm gonna click okay. Now that I'm done with my option bits, I'm gonna take a look at my task mask. So I want all of my taxes to work. So I'm gonna click select all. So they're all getting checked and then click okay. As you can see, the auto types above are checked the same. And I'm also gonna activate it. I'm not gonna have any auto device mask in here, but if you need, for example, for your delivery to go to specific printers, then you can use auto device masking as well. So now that I have my order type program correctly, I'm gonna click save. So we have our first two items. We can begin a check and then we can switch to the delivery order type because now we have it. The third is to add a delivery fee of $5. Now it depends on how this delivery fee will be handled by your restaurant. If the delivery fee will go to the delivery driver directly, you might want to set it up as a service charge, for example. For us, we are taking the delivery fee at the restaurant level and then paying the driver on the paycheck. So the way I'm going to add this delivery fee is actually as a menu item. So this will report as regular revenue that we take in on the restaurant, just like we would sell a regular menu item. And then we will track it through reports and make sure that the delivery fees are paid correctly to the drivers. 
So let's go to the menu item configuration and see if we have a delivery fee programmed. So I'm going to open menu item maintenance. And as we can see, there's no items here. So in order to see the menu items, I have to click a search and I don't enter anything in the name here. I just hit search, which is going to make the entire database populate. So to find menu items quickly, the way I do it is using the find. So you can either click the binoculars here at the top or you can use control F as a shortcut on your keyboard. And then I'm going to look by name and I'm going to type in delivery. It's a good idea to check if you have a delivery programmed. You might have it by default or you might need to add it. So I'm going to click find next and it did find something and I do have a delivery fee here. So I'm going to take a look if it's programmed correctly. So it's under the fees, which is perfectly fine. And the major group is miscellaneous. The family group is miscellaneous and it's under reporting group seven, which is good. I'm going to take a look at the definition. So the menu item class is miscellaneous and it is allowed to be used. So I have FFFF, which means all of the main levels and sub levels are programmed correctly. It's not on any screen lookup. So if we take a look at the SLU here, it's not populated on a screen lookup, which is perfectly fine because I'm going to put it part of my macro and then I'm going to take a look at the price. So the price is at $5, which is perfect. If you do need to add a menu item, simply select another menu item that you have and then click the insert key, use it as a template and then just add the record number, whatever you needed. I do have a specific fees area. So if you do have one, add it there and then just name it delivery fee or whatever you like. And then you can just enter the price here, whatever the fee are you're going to charge and then click OK and add it. But since I do have one, I'm not going to add one right now. So I'm going to go ahead and close menu item maintenance. Now that I know I have all three of my functions in the macro, I'm back at the workstation to kind of plan out how I'm going to program my macro. So I'm going to sign in and I would like the first step to be begin a check by name. Also for me here is name begin tab. The reason why I like to begin a tab is because I can enter a check name here and I can add some identifying information such as the customer name or something like that that will help the driver out. You can also enter the address here or maybe the driver name so you know who is this for, any kind of information that you decide. For example, let's say that the customer's name is Brian. So I'm going to enter their name here and then click OK. So I remember that after I pressed the first button, I got presented with that keyboard to enter some identifying information. After that, I get presented with a number pad to enter the number of guests. This is also relevant to track if you are tracking number of guests. So let's say this is going to be for two people and you can ask over the phone, say, you know, for how many people is this going to be? Uh, good for tracking and uh, realizing check averages. So I'm just going to enter two. And now I am in the check area. So after I arrive in the check area, you can see that my default auto type is dine in. So I would like the macro to change this. And then I will also like it to add my delivery fee here automatically. So whoever's taking the order doesn't forget about it. So now that I have everything mapped out, I'm going to go to page design and actually implement it. So I'm going to go into page design to add my new button and I'm going to add it in the begins check page. So I'll open this up, change the aspect ratio to 16 to nine. And I want to make a little bit of room here in these buttons at the top. So a little trick that I use is I select all of them at the same time and then hold down the control key and then make them all slightly smaller. So now I have a little bit of room, move them all about a little bit. This one as well. I think this one is slightly smaller than the other one. So now they're all the same size and I'm going to just copy one of these. So right click on it, select copy and then right click here and hit paste. So I'm going to move this button in place. But if I take a look at the function, it still says begin table. So let's change that to begin delivery. So now I'm also going to change the color just so it doesn't mix with the other ones. This nice emerald color looks good. And then for a function, so 
what it does exactly, it just begins check by table. So I'm gonna select a little arrow here and I'm gonna look for macro. So I'm gonna select to use a macro and then click OK. And now I have this extra button here that says edit macro keys. So when I click this, I get a new screen. And here is where I'm going to add all of the functions in the sequence that we discussed earlier, then I want my macro to do. So I'm going to click add. And then the first thing that I want to do is begin the check. So I'm going to search for begin. So now I have a check by number, by name, by prompt, by table. So remember we discussed we're going to start it by name. So we have that keyboard where we can enter some identifying information. So I'm going to have that as my first step and then click OK. Now remember right after I hit begin check by name, I had a keyboard added. So these macros are complex functions, but they're not very smart. So that's why I went through all of those prompts manually to see how many pop ups I get until I reach the check. So I'm going to click add. So now you see number one here. I have number one begin check by name. I'm going to scroll down. And then the next thing I have to do because that keyboard appears is enter a wait function. So now I have to tell the macro that there will be a dialogue and I want it to wait for input. If you don't add these dialogue wait for inputs within your macro, what's going to happen is the macro will break if a dialogue appears when the macro is not expecting it. That's why I said that it's not very smart. It doesn't know on its own to wait for that input. So my first dialogue where for input was that keyboard where I entered uh, the customer's name. And there was another one, if you recall correctly, where I had to enter the number of guests. So I'm going to click add. And now we're at step three of the macro. So I'm going to enter dialogue wait for input again, select this. So step one was to begin my check by name, then wait for me to enter the guest name, then wait for me to enter the number of guests. And then step four, remember, we wanted to switch the order type to delivery. So from the drop down, this is not going to be a function, I'm going to look for order type, right? So I'm going to select order type. And now I have the different order types. So I'm going to select the one that we've created the delivery one. So by default, again, the computer will go by default to dine in, I want it to switch to delivery. And our last step is to add the menu item. So again, I'm going to add step number five from the drop down. I want to add menu item. And then when I'm going to click the little arrow, I'm going to search by name and I'm going to enter delivery. So now we have delivery fee, which was menu item number 201 was the one we saw earlier. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to review my steps really quick. So function begin check by name. This is correct. Next, it's going to wait for me to enter the guest name. Next, it's going to wait for me to enter the number of guests. And that's step number three. Step number four is to change the order type to delivery. And then step number five is going to be to add the menu item. Now, I also want this to change the panel for me. So if I don't do anything, uh, for the next page panel is just going to stay in this begin check area. So what I wanted to do is take me to the transactions page. More specifically, I wanted to go to the food area. So that way it were already in the food area and uh, the servers will be able to enter the food. And then you can tell it exactly which specific area you want. I'm not going to say any specific areas. Uh, I'm just going to leave it the way it is and then click OK. So now that I have all of my functions in place, I'm going to go ahead and close and save. So I have all my settings saved in this begin delivery button. We can go ahead and close page design. So now let's go to the workstation and test it out. So here we are back at the workstation. The first thing I'm going to do is click a quick update database because I don't want to wait for the five minutes until the computer does it on its own. And I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And now we have the begin delivery button here just as expected. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. So now we have the check name. So for me, I'm just going to enter the guest name 
and then we're gonna say that this is for two guests because I'm gonna ask them and that's what they're gonna tell me. And then the macro has worked. As we can see, we have the guest name here. The order type is set to delivery and I already have the delivery fee added. So it's gonna be very easy for the servers and order takers, whoever's gonna take the order to enter the menu items, send it to the kitchen, take payment, whatever they need to do and proceed from here. And that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments below if you do use macros for anything at the moment or if you plan on using them in the future. Also, let me know if you have any future video ideas or anything else that you would like me to cover. If you're enjoying the content, leave this video a big thumbs up and join our free Facebook community. And I'll see you all next time.